of a safe word you use in your house when it comes to your kids to protect your kids and but also to protect yourself so again this is in your house we've heard um, about safe words outside the home which I think is incredibly smart and every family should institute this is that um, you your family has a safe word so say your safe word is golden retriever all right so that's the safe word and somebody comes up to your child hey your mom said she couldn't pick you up from you know such and such today so i'm here to pick you up and i'm a friend of your mom's from work blah blah blah. you don't know me and the kid can be like what's the safe word Mm -hmm. and if they don't know the word to give to you then you know that's a stranger and they're trying to abduct you right Uh so it's like a password it is 100 percent a password but in this instance I'm wondering if you have incorporated and you have instituted a safe word in your own home. And, you know, Bart and I are in the trenches right now. We only have the one kid, but we're in the trenches as far as like, you know, the toddler era. (sighs) And it can be, you can, it can be quite frustrating. Okay. And if you add multiple kids in the mix, I can only imagine. So, Sometimes you get a little frustrated and the other partner may be at home at the time and they can overhear the frustration. And so they want to intervene, but they don't want to undermine you while intervening, if that makes sense. Because I, you know, it it can be taken a certain way if the partner comes in, like they're trying to control the situation and take over the situation. And it's like, it makes you feel like a lesser parent. You're like, no, I have this under control. I don't need you coming in and taking over, whatever. But sometimes you're in this, you're, you're, you're peaking at an emotional level that you're not really seeing it, seeing the situation for what it is. Mm-hmm. And you just need to go remove yourself and take a breather. And that's when the other parent needs to come in and literally tap you out. But instead of making a big scene about it, the parent can come in and like be like, golden retriever. And that is the other parent's sign just to drop whatever they're doing to turn around and walk out of the room and the other parent comes in and starts taking control of the situation. Or not taking control of the situation, but takes take takes over the situation. So you can remove yourself, you can count to 10, you can get your breath. Because I'm not kidding you, there are moments when these little tiny humans <laughs> push you to a brink you didn't think even flipping existed. Mm-hmm. And so I'm contemplating... Um, I'm contemplating doing this in our home because, you know, my husband, he's a stay at home dad and he's crushing it, but he's been, you know, working on this condo and I know he's burning it at both ends and he's getting very worn out. And so I don't want him, I don't want, when I come into the room, I don't want him to think that I'm trying to like woman handle the situation that I'm, I'm there just to relieve him and not take over. And I found this on TikTok. And it's from Preschool Therapy. His name is Ryan Allen. He goes by Preschool Therapy on TikTok. And I really do subscribe to this. And I think it could be super beneficial for parents. You need to have a parenting safe word. I was asked a lot, what do you do when the other parent is the one who's emotionally dysregulated? How do you appropriately go in and get them out of that situation so that you can try and help the child? Having a verbal or even better, some kind of gesture that lets the other parent know that you're going to try and tag in and they need to take a break can really help. Talk about it beforehand and come to the agreement that if one of the parents does this, the other parent, not going to question, going to step out of the situation. If they felt like that they had it under control and they didn't need you to step in, that's something you can process afterward. But if you do it this way, it helps that parent save face and allows both of you to work together to help your child Mm -hmm. and each other. So see, and I love this and I want to do this, but my husband and I aren't really seeing eye to eye because... He doesn't want me always to like, in quotations, come to the rescue of Jimmy whenever he's crying or Jimmy's frustrated. Um, Like an incident happened. I don't want to use incident, but an example was when, you know, Bart was changing his diaper and Jimmy was being a little pain in the butt and Bart was being stern with him or whatever. And he's like, I don't want him to think he can always cry and his mommy's going to come to his rescue. Mm, He wants him to man up. So it's like, where (laughs) is... Curl up hair, Jimmy. (laughs) (laughs) Strap up your boots. (laughs) I wipe them. He's, the pair's there. I can guarantee that. She's like, I grew them in belly. I did, really did. And so it's like, where 
is that balance uh-huh. of when you're you're not overstepping the bounds of the other parent and it's it, it's it's complicated and it's layered we do the tap in and it'll just be like i'm tapping in two taps and that's kind of our signal but it's only when we notice the other parent is getting stressed mm. and you can tell when the emotions like the words become clipped and yep. you start getting louder it's not about the kids. It's to relieve the parent and let them take a few minutes. And that's when we do it. Uh, Angela, thank you so much for joining the Burt Show. So you you have a safe word for the parents? We have a safe word for the parents and for the kids. And I want to emphasize, you said the safe word for like if a stranger comes up, even if a neighbor comes up, yeah. you need to explain to your kids. Mm-hmm. Because um, most of the time, it's usually somebody they know that does something to them. So that's so right. You also need to have the safe word in the house to where if somebody breaks in the house, my kids, we have a whole routine. They know exactly where to go. We practice it. They know where to go. They have attic space to go to. If uh, somebody knocks on it and says, we're the police, you're safe now, unless the police give them that safe word, they are not to say anything or come out until they hear that safe word or they hear my voice. It's very important to emphasize anybody can say it. Even somebody saying there's a police officer. Gotcha. You've got to emphasize it inside the house as well as the outside and just make sure that they know a stranger danger can be a person they know off of. I appreciate that, Angela. That's fantastic advice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, Nikki. All right. Safe word for the house. What do you guys do? Safe word for the house. Safe word out and about. Just like the other caller before. If there's an issue for, you know, if you're sick or something at work, at school, but you can't call or you don't want to say out loud, you can actually say it. You can also say the safe word if for my husband and I, it's honey, because we don't go around calling each other honey for whatever reason, <laughs> is when one of us is becoming irate yeah. or excessive and we'll just say, honey, I love you. And that basically me, that cues me to walk away. Gotcha. Yeah. I know. I, and I, I do. I love that. I think the tapping out. The, the, the code word to switch out or whatever. And I think it's like you have to be on this. You're on the same team here, right? So you got mm-hmm. you to trust your partner. You can't take advantage of that situation. And I will fully admit there have been times when I looked at Bart and I'm like, I'm tapping out. <laughs> I'm like, I, I have to remove myself from this situation because <laughs> I'm about to lose my mind. I think these are all good because in my house, it was a phrase. My mom used it often and it was come get your damn child. <laughs> the Bert Show.